Welcome to class six of Kinesiology 3500, Drugs and Athletics. This lesson we're gonna be covering chapter 13 of our text, Drugs and Sport by Matram on stimulants and chapter 22 on caffeine. Uh, be sure to be checking your Stanislaw State email and your course um, page on Blackboard every day throughout the semester for any important information or announcements. Stimulants. Stimulants come in many varieties from everyday use such as soft drinks and coffee to teas and illicit drugs. And it does have a significant impact on our bodies. Certain parts of the brain govern specific functions. The hippocampus is critical for memory. Nerve cells or neurons travel from one area of the body to another via pathways to send and integrate information. For example, there's the rewards pathway. Starting at the ventral tegmental area, also known as the VTA, shown in blue, follow the neuronal path to the nucleus abucans, abu, agu, acumpens, which is in purple, and then onto the frontal cortex. This pathway gets activated when a person receives positive reinforcements for certain behaviors, also known as a reward. This is what happens when a person takes an addictive drug. So, speaking of addictive drugs that are legal, nicotine is a stimulant that comes from the tobacco leaf. It comes in all different types of forms, from smoking to chew tobacco. Uh, it can even be uh, helped to treat patients uh, using, uh, using a nicotine patch to help wean them off of nicotine. It's been widely used in many different applications, including in the past as an insecticide. It has a half-life of about seven seconds. And, it, and as far as its actions, it can be uh, affected in our cardiovascular systems, our metabolic systems, our respiratory systems. It does affect healing time as well in our bodies. It can be linked, smoking is linked to cancer, heart attacks, strokes, and emphysema. And the tobacco industry is very big and continues to have a strong influence throughout the world um, and internationally despite the campaigns to limit its influence in the United States. This slide shows a chart of various areas where the, of the body where nicotine can have an adverse effect. Uh, so many here with the heart, with our central nervous system, our lungs of course, and in the field where I work in, in healthcare, it does affect your joints and your uh, musculoskeletal system, uh, particularly in terms of healing time. Many of these ad campaigns have stopped. Joe Camel was an extremely popular ad campaign by Camel Cigarettes and it was one of the most highly recognizable caricatures for children, which causes a major controversy. Everybody from cowboys to Santa Claus has been used to promote smoking cigarettes. A different era has changed for the most part in North America, but smoking remains highly prevalent in other countries and continents such as Europe and Asia. Turning our attention to amphetamines, which are a central nervous system stimulant with a strong history of use in medicine, athletics, and even in the military where it was used in World War II by the Nazis to help combat fatigue. Um, it was commonly used in athletics such as cycling and uh, the first televised death uh, was in the 1967 Tour de France with British cyclist Tommy Simpson uh, perishing um, on Mount Verdoux, uh, as well as Newt Jensen in the 1960 uh, Olympics. It does increase heart rate and blood pressure and can cause cardiac distress, leading up to cardiovascular disease and even death. So here we see a slide that shows various effects of amphetamine use versus a placebo, which is a non-drug use, and its effect on arm and leg strength. As you can see on the second category down in knee extension, uh, amphetamine use had, had a significant difference um, in its use and the power output that could be uh, put out by that muscle group. Methamphetamines are one of the most highly addictive and accessible drugs out in society. 
It's not limited to homeless people, skid row people, or down and out people of society. Meth has also found its way into various levels of professional and high level sports. Uses are not necessarily for performance, but perhaps even recreation. Unlike the debatable addictive qualities of marijuana as a recreational use drug, methamphetamine is unquestionably highly addictive and destructive. Nevertheless, uh, as, as recent as 2012, uh, Tampa Bay Rays outfielders Josh Sale, second baseman Ryan Brett, and pitchers Charlie Clunane and Justin Woodall were all suspended for 50 games in 2012 after positive te drug tests revealed the use of meth. Despite drug ed education and coaches, agents, and advisors for these athletes, poor decisions continue to be made with drugs that will undoubtedly end with a detrimental effect. Here we do see some of these athletes that have used these uh, methamphetamines in the past. As contrary as it does seem for a pro athlete to use these type of illicit drugs, there may be some reasons that are not entirely rational or good reasons, but rather it gives you some background on how these decisions are made. It can be a form of escapism from the pressures and stressors of professional sports, or perhaps a vice providing the athlete uh, a, a means of release. Go ahead and we'll turn our attention to cocaine. Yes, it's true, cocaine was at one time an active ingredient in Coca-Cola soft drinks and cocaine had its medicinal purposes as a pain reliever available over the counter. Here we see the source of cocaine and its chemical structure, physiological effects, and how it's derived from nature. The function of cocaine Again, we can see that there's no actual performance benefits associated with its use. It's got a short-term um, active life and, and quick activity, and the results are short-lived. Um, there can be performance deficits in term of, terms of erratic play and deficits in verbal recall and recognition domains. It is a powerful central nervous stimulant, and it has derived from the coca plant leaf. It can give a feeling of exhilaration and well-being um, and, it, and it, you know, it does inhibit the reuptake of dopamine and norepinephrine transport. In terms of illicit drugs, MDMA or ecstasy, it's known as Adam Empathy EX XTC Molly's. Um, it has a psychoactive amphetamine um, it does have a psychedelic or stimulating effect, also known as an all-arounder type of uh, drug. It can inhibit serotonin release and reuptake. It can cause an oxytocin release, uh, often associated with uh, sexual pleasure centers, including orgasm. It can induce a sense of intimacy and diminish feelings of fear and anxiety and reduce inhibitions. It can also cause, in some cases, Anxiety, paranoia, depression, irritability, fatigue, and impaired attention, focus, and concentration. There have been uh, re reports and episodes of very bad um, adverse effects, and each user uh, does not know how they may respond to um, using a drug such as ecstasy. And of course, the, uh, the type of drugs that are found on the street are not reliable in terms of their dosage and uh, the, power, the power and potency of those drugs. Long-term effects can affect memory and uh, can uh, be associated with lasting decreases in brain serotonin. Drugs used for attention deficit hyperactive disorder include Ritalin, uh, which has also been used in athletics to maintain attention level. Um, athletes will use this in sports that require their attention to remain at a high level. It can increase and maintain alertness and combat fatigue and improve attention. Um, this has been seen in baseball uh, with athletes who have to stay alert, alert and awake for over two hours per game and a minimum of 162 regular season games plus spring training and perhaps the playoffs and World Series. Um, the cumulative use of prescription stimulants and associated with impaired verbal learning, memory capacity, and drug-induced psychosis. Um, it does have its usefulness in ADHD, and it seems 
counterintuitive that you would use a stimulant for attention deficit hyperactive disorder, but it does help um, these uh, patients to be able to maintain better focus and concentration while they're in class. Caffeine. It's known um, as trimethylxanthine. It's a chemical formula. We can see that it's a stimulant drug containing coffee and teas. It's what makes coffee so addictive. It can stimulate the central nervous system and in the right amounts causes adrenaline to be released and can enhance heart function. So caffeine can be used for both medical and recreational purposes. Medically, it's used very commonly with, uh, as an over-the-counter migraine headache medication as the caffeine can act as a vasoconstrictor um, and help uh, relieve the, the pressure that people feel when they have headaches. Recreationally, it can be used, be used as a boost of energy or a heightened level of alertness or just simply to stay awake longer. So yes, caffeine is an addictive drug. A stimulant operates using the same mechanisms that amphetamines, cocaine, and heroin use to stimulate the brain. It's obviously more mild than those other drugs, but it can use the same channels. So how does it work? Um, caffeine works by changing the chemistry in the brain. It can block the action of natural brain chemicals that are associated with sleep. Um, it blocks adenosine reception so you feel more alert and can inject um, adrenaline into your system and give you a boost. Sources of caffeine, many common sources include cocoa, tea, and colas. It can even be found in chocolate. And the short-term effects of caffeine can make you feel alert for everyday tasks like school and work, but with too much of it, it can cause headaches um, in the short term. In the long term, it can cause ulcers and be uh, a problem causing heart arrhythmias in certain people and if some people with heart problems are, are instructed to avoid caffeine altogether. Caffeine use at a certain level of uh, 15 micrograms per milliliter by the NCAA is considered a positive drug test which would be somewhere between six to eight cups of brewed coffee. Um, energy drinks um, contain a, a, a a legitimate amount of caffeine in them as an active ingredient as well. Um, and uh, more caffeine is not necessarily better. Um, caffeine can be consumed at very high levels. Um, it can cause gastrointestinal issues including nausea, shaking, and overstimulation that can impact, impact your sleep and performance. There are various considerations for the timing and use of caffeine including uh, the form that you eat it in, that you take it in, whether it be energy bars, gels, medications, liquids, um, taking food with it, your usual habits in terms of the amount that you take as well as the time that you ingest it. And each person is going to be different in the way that they respond to caffeine. So is caffeine a performance enhancer? Um, it can enhance performance for three reasons. The ability for caffeine to act as an ergogenic aid, it does help certain levels of performance. Um, the ability to reduce the rate of glycogen consumption and the capability to reduce the stress of fatigue. So there are potential benefits of it in terms of decreased pain and perception of fatigue. It can increase your coordination and ability to focus and sustain training intensity, which is why it's used oftentimes in athletics, as long as you don't take too much of it. In terms of its legality in the NCAA, it's a banned substance at certain levels. Urinary caffeine concentration exceeding 15 micrograms per milliliter. Again, it's equivalent to ingesting 500 milligrams or the equivalent of five, six to eight cups of brewed coffee two to three hours before competition can result in a positive drug test. The International Olympic Committee listed as a restrictive drug. And of course we see the parameters um, on this page and from earlier that it is allowed. Now let's take a look at some review questions. Okay, so the following are true about 
amphetamines, except it's a central nervous system stimulant, psychologically and physically addictive, decreases blood pressure and heart rate, or synthesized as ephedrine and used to treat asthmatics. So basically, which one of these statements is false about amphetamines? And the answer is it decreases blood pressure and heart rate. That is false. Sources of caffeine include all of the following except well, that should be pretty easy. Beer is not, does not have caffeine in it. Amphetamines are essential nervous system depressant that can decrease heart rate and aggression. That is false. And of course, we know that the opposite is true, that it does increase heart rate, blood pressure, and it is a stimulant. The drug commonly used to treat attention deficit hyperactive disorder is... Ritalin. Cocaine affects and functions as essential nervous system stimulant and appetite depressant. Doesn't have a long term effect. It's very addictive and um, it, it has been subject to uh, mixed reviews on athletic performance for the most part. It, it has not been shown to be um, an improver in athletic performance can sometimes lead to erratic performance. Caffeine is an active ingredient in many migraine headache medications. That is true. Caffeine is allowable at amounts of up to 15 micrograms per milliliter in a urine sample. Long-term effects of caffeine use may include ulcers and heart problems, and yes, that is true. The area of the brain that is activated when a person receives positive reinforcement for a certain behavior is called the reward center. Side effects of nicotine use include increased circulation, no, decreased blood pressure, no, bradycardia, no, bronchospasm, sounds right to me, and that's correct. Nicotine is a depressant, no. Dilates the blood vessels, no. It constricts them. Is a sleep aid, no. But it is metabolized in the liver. Methamphetamine, um, again, it can be derived from Sudafed and other uh, medications that have ephedrine or other stimulants in them. Caffeine. It is used in migraine pain, pain medications. Just a reminder, check your university email for any important announcements. Only use your university email when corresponding with your instructor in this course. Do not use any other personal email accounts. Log on to the course Blackboard page on a daily basis for assignment guidelines, calendaring your due dates, and checking your updated grades on Grade Center. And once again, our drugs our text, Drugs and Sports 6th Edition is available for two hour checkout inside the library at Stanislaus State University. Thank you very much.